entering for rust mites can be quite difficult. I'm going to show you a washing technique to help you extract mites directly off of tissues from grapevine samples. During late summer, I went out and collected some leaves in the vineyard from the mid canopy and the upper canopy, locations where the rust mites tend to be. And I took with me some plastic sandwich sized Ziploc bags and collected each leaf individually in the bag. The reason for putting it in individual bags is to allow for isolation of whatever population of insects might be on this leaf for later quantification in the lab. It also is helpful for our washing technique, which I'm going to show you in a few moments. For this technique, of course, you need to have Ziploc plastic bags uh, that are about sandwich size to fit a full leaf into it or any other vine tissue sample that you might want to use, early season shoots or uh, little buds early in the season. You'll also need some rubbing alcohol, which usually comes from any drugstore at about 70% uh, isopropyl alcohol. And we will actually be diluting this to 35% by putting one part rubbing alcohol and one part water. And you'll need some Petri dishes to put your sample in. In this case, I have two different types of Petri dishes. Both are 15 centimeters in diameter. These work rather well. And usually I use the bottom dish because it tends to be deeper and is able to hold the solution that we're going to use. I like to use ones with a grid on the bottom, either ones that have an etched grid or ones that you can draw the grid directly on the back side with a Sharpie or other permanent marker. You'll also need a counter if you do want to quantify the actual counts of mites uh, in your sample. A graduated cylinder that can hold about 50 mils of solution or a measuring cup. A scissors and of course a stereo microscope or dissecting microscope that can go up to at least 40x. It can, we can see mites at a little bit lower, but you need to train your eye a little bit more to be able to see the mites at a lower magnification. So for this process, what we do is we take our leaf that's in a bag, and we take it out, and we cut that leaf up into approximately one inch squares. They don't have to be perfect squares. They don't have to be one inch exactly, but about that size. So we want to cut them up, and we're going to place them back in that same Ziploc bag that you collected the sample in. Then we're going to take our 35% alcohol, or 35% isopropyl alcohol, and I took 45 to 50 mils is usually what we need, and that's to allow enough of the alcohol to cover the leaves, but also to fit within our Petri dish. I seal it and then I shake it vigorously for about 30 seconds. And the key is to not move it around like this or anything. We want it to actually make contact at a, a, a good rate to the surface of the leaf tissue. The alcohol will actually have, break that surface tension and pull the mites off the leaf surface. If you've done any surface scanning of leaves for mites, you know that they hide in the little cracks and crevices by veins, also under leaf hairs that are there during early season. So this method really helps pull off whatever insects or mites are already on the leaves. So once you have that done, we'll just take a, a corner of the bag and we'll snip it off with the scissors. And then I'm going to pour it directly into one of the petri dishes, making sure that the leaf pieces remain in the bag. And that's our sample that we can now put under the stereo microscope and start looking for rust mites, predatory mites, or grips. Um, any other insect that may be on the leaf tissue is able to be found using this extraction method. Uh, we found that the, the percentage of extraction usually is between 80 and 90 percent of the total of what's on the leaf surface using this method. So now that we have our mite sample and alcohol solution in the petri dish, I'm putting it under my stereo microscope. And if you have one that has under lighting as well as um, top lighting, it might be wise to use both of those, but you might have to play around with the lighting. 
If you have a different model that only has uh, an over lighting, that's okay. You might just have to play around with the with the light source that you have to be able to see the mites. Generally, you'll be able to scan the petri dish for the larger insects. So the thrips are going to be much larger and able to be seen at about uh, 10x or maybe 20x. And then you can zoom in further to try to see the <clears throat> mites at about 40x. Once you get trained at looking for the mites, you can see them at a much lower magnification. You don't necessarily always need the 40x. Uh, one of the things that I like to use when I do quantifications is a petri dish that has some lines drawn on it or a grid that allows me to basically keep count of the amount of mites that I'm seeing and move my petri dish along the tracks. And then the counters are inexpensive and you can use those to keep count rather than trying to keep count in your head. Some of our samples of rust mites on leaves can be anywhere from several hundred to several thousand. So it's easier to keep track of it on a counter like this. And of course having a data sheet available that allows you to list the sample, some of the symptoms that you see on the leaves, the counts for rust mites, thrips, and predatory mites are three areas that I tend, to, or three organisms that I tend to look for uh, in part because the thrips can also so cause some damage on grapevine tissues similar to rust mites, and the predatory mites of course are beneficials that we want to keep track of. So having a data sheet is important. Also, when counting samples, if you find that you have uh, very high numbers uh, in one area and it might take you a long time to count, you may choose to use random areas on a gridded petri dish to count and then simply use a calculation and a calculator to try to figure out what that percent of total uh, surface area on the petri dish is representative of your counts. So you can certainly do that to try to come up with better counts.